Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 20 Live. Today is Saturday, March the 31st, 2012. Our special guest today is Leticia uh, Letida, Tia, excuse me, and Barbara Talent. Our topic is uh, 100 plus STEM resources and web resources, along with uh, new features in Live Binders. Shout out to Tammy Moore in uh, the chat today for providing closed captioning. I went through some instructions a few minutes ago about participating in our sessions. And I talked about the fact that all our sessions are recorded. So that uh, don't worry if that chat flies by too, bad, by too quickly. Because on our website, live.classroom20.com, in the archives and resources page, we record everything. We record the full uh, Blackboard Collaborate recording, the, the chat, the uh, an MP3 audio file, an embedded uh, movie file for you, along with a long list of links uh, with uh, access to our live binder, which is going to be kind of the feature today. So I'm going to move on and not talk about live binder. I'm going to talk about what you can do is tell me where you're located in the world today. So this is what I asked you to do a few minutes ago. We talked about going to the left-hand side of the whiteboard getting that starburst, clicking on your mouse, and then dragging your location to where you are in the world. I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Peggy's in Phoenix, Arizona. Kim's in San Antonio, Texas. And today I know that uh, Tammy is in Arkansas. So I know Gustavo said he was in Uruguay. Someone's in Italy. Uh, Ian's over then in Australia. If you can't make that... Uh, little starburst work, please just type in the chat where you are located. Again, we have a, a good cross section across in the world. It's uh, kind of interesting to see who we're connected to today. So I want to talk very briefly about live binders most of you are familiar with it. I know Michael is new today. We use uh, this application called Live Binders, which I know Barbara is going to tell us more later on in the session. But all the links here today are going to be compiled not only with our links, but also with uh, Leticia has the Live Binder set up for us today. And she's going to be using it as we go through the session. So you're actually going to be able to uh, experience uh, using the Live Binder. But for ourselves, Classroom 20 Live, every month we make a Live Binder. And you'll see the different uh, presenters listed across the page as well. I want you to take note that we do have a separate um, tab for Classroom 20 Live resources. And we talk about the survey at the end of our session. If you don't catch the survey, that's where you can go to access the uh, form for Peggy to send out your email to you. Because if you don't give us uh, your email address, um, we can't send a, a certificate. And that's one good way to do it. So let's move on to more activity for you. And that's with poll questions. Remember I said at the underneath your name on the right hand side, there's that little icon for voting. Click on it and tell me, do you use STEM content in your teaching? Uh, green check if you do, and a red X if you don't. And if you can't make that little voting option work, then please just give us your answer in the chat. These questions are to help uh, Tia sort of frame the conversation because she'll know what your experiences are. few people may have just popped in at the end. The voting icon is under your name, the fourth one from the left. We've got a few people here, and we don't have a lot of votes. So I'm just going to give you a second to figure it out. So here's the responses for the first question. Uh, but half of you haven't been able to find out this voting function, and it's split between uh, yes and no for this particular poll question. Let's go to the next one. Question number two: Are are you using Live Binder to organize resources for your students or yourself? Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to publish the responses to the whiteboard. Um, quite a few people are still not using live binders and not, maybe not be familiar with it. And I think you're going to really appreciate watching Tia demonstrate how live binders is such a great uh, tool to help get organized. Let's go to our third poll question. And I just need to change the polling options. You just give me a minute to do that, please. There you go. So in your opinion, which of these areas in STEM education is least often addressed in classrooms today? A for science, B technology, C engineering, D math, and if you're using STEAM as an acronym, the final selection is E. So go ahead, A to E. Okay, I see most of the votes. I think I have them. Let's publish them to the whiteboard. So it looks like it's C, engineering. Kind of an interesting. I don't know whether that's because that's not a content area, but I know T is going to explain a little more in her presentation. So it's my privilege now to introduce you, Latia Cooper, and uh, her subject today is 100 plus STEM. We web resources. Uh, Leticia is a education instructional technology to specialist in Beaufort County District School Board in South Carolina. Uh, she has a bachelor's degree in history education and master's degree in curriculum and instruction in technology. And obviously technology is her passion and she believes that when technology is integrated into the classroom all students are motivated to learn. Leticia, I'm going to pass over the microphone to you now. And if there's anything else you'd like to add uh, about your background and what you've been doing, please feel free to, to do that. And as you go through your presentation, wherever you would like to. But it's my opportunity now to give you the newbie question today is, what is STEM education and why is it important? Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm so pleased to be here. Um, thank you all for joining us today um, to talk about STEM education. And just to add a little bit more about myself, I was a middle school teacher, and I am now working in two schools, well, three schools, an early learning center, an elementary school, and a high school. So I hope to touch everyone today with a little bit of um, different things for all the grade levels. Um, and to answer the newbie question, what is STEM education and why is it so important? Well, STEM is an acronym for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And STEM in education focuses on creating a STEM-centered classroom where students problem solve, they discover, and explore for themselves to answer questions or any types of problems. STEM education is so important because of the global society we live in today. Our students have to be prepared to compete and qualify for the high-tech global jobs of today and tomorrow. And it's important that we start them off from elementary school and continue that through middle and high schools so that our students can compete with the world, with um, other students in the world. So I hope that explains that for you. Um, to all of you, those of you who may not be familiar with, with what STEM is. Okay, and I'm going to start by going into the live binder. Second, I'm loading. Okay, go back to the page. I'm sorry. Okay. 
Okay, our first one that we're going to look at is from the Siemens STEM Academy. And this looks at teacher resources, its grades, um, through all the grade levels. And they have many websites here that you can explore as a teacher. And the Siemens STEM Academy is a part of Discovery Education. So I think you will need a login um, to view some of the resources, but I think you can find most of them through um, um, are free if you look at the web links. And they're still trying to bring it up for me, so please be patient. Thank you all. Okay. And this is the live binder. As you can see that there are a lot of resources in this binder. Um, on the first tab of the live binder, you'll see it says STEM. And on this page, I have many resources there for you. And you can look at all of these. These are different resources for finding grants, for learning what STEM education is all about. Um, but as I said, the most important one that I'd like to look at is Siemens STEM Academy. And that's a very nice resource. Now, in Live Byroners, it does have you go and click on another page. But it's just a great resource that can be used for lesson plans and all of those different ones. So now that you all have seen that, I want to take you on to the science tab. And we're going to start there first because there are some great science resources. And as you can see, I've placed all these great resources into a live binder. And a live binder basically holds everything that I need as an instructional technology specialist and a teacher to give to my teachers. The first tab I want to click on is Bio Digital. Human. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. All right. I want to allow you all to catch up. Um, okay, if you all can see it, the first tab I'm on is Bio Digital Human. Okay. Does everyone see BioDigital Human? Okay, I'm not either. It's not popping up. Let me see. Okay, if you click the open in the new window, but it won't display in the frame. If you just click Bio Digital Human here, we're at the bottom, it will open up for you so that you can see it. Bio Digital Human is a great find. Um, I think it's one of the better resources for looking at the human body. And looking at the human body, when it opens up, you can basically choose which one of them that you want. And you can choose to look at the skeletal system, the respiratory system, the um, any the cardiovascular system. You can actually turn this body around and make it work for you that way. You can take away parts of the body. I think it's just one of the great one of the greatest resources that you have out here. It's also available on the iPad and in Android app. Okay. The next one I'm going to show you is going to be Teacher's Domain Science. And I'll give that time to load. Okay. Teacher's Domain Science, if you haven't seen this before, has many science resources available for you. But it also has English, math, science, and social studies if you are interested in any of those, but we'll focus on the science. And of course, there's Earth and Space Science resources, engineering resources, which most of you said that is the least taught, life science, and physical science. So I'm just going to click the plus sign so that you can see it, the engineering resources that they have. And they have engineering design, materials and tools, systems and technologies. And so if you were to look at any of these resources, 
it breaks it down even further for you. I'm just going to click on Engineering Design. And Teacher's Domain is great. It's a free resource. It's free to sign up for it. It costs nothing. You can decide to search by grade level from pre-K to post-secondary. You can also look at the types of resources under media type. You can choose video, and you see that they have 170 engineering videos, 60 interactives, images, and audio. And most of these are downloadable, so you can download them to your computer to use later in your lessons. They also have lesson plans for you and documents. So I think this is actually a great resource. It gives descriptions of each of the resources. Okay, I'm not seeing them. Okay, yeah, Latia, I know we're yes. having people, trouble with people dropping the web tour. Could you try um, using app sharing to sure. demonstrate your life binder? Yes, yes. I'll do that. All right. Hopefully everyone can see the live binder now. You just need to click on your um, web browser because the Illuminate window is, is blocky on the left-hand side. So now we both have another. Uh, let's see how we're going to get there. There's coming. People are asking just maybe to give a little bit more explanation when you go through. And okay. Like a, and and the one thing I just know, if you were playing a movie, they won't be able to pick up the sound except your your microphone. So. Okay. The sound's not important, but can they were asking if you could go back and show the the bio digital one. Digital. Okay, I'll go back and share that. Can everyone see it now? I'm not. Is yes, it still being blocked. It. It's yeah, it's totally it's clear now. Okay. Great. All right, I'll go back Thank you. on BioDigital Human. Okay, and I'm actually going to go to the site on this one. It's taking a little bit of time. I'm sorry for the delay, everyone. We're back on the Bio Digital Human tab so that everyone can see that. And Bio Digital Human may take a little time to load. Um, the great thing about this is that you can set it to male or female. They also have a quiz portion in here, and you can start a quiz on it on the different types of the body which is very nice. It also will tell you conditions related to different um, body parts, um, different ailments that come with that type of the body. You can also take photos. At the bottom here is a capture button. You can take a snapshot of the body part. You can also zoom into it and you get a closer view. And hopefully it will load soon. Okay, it's taking a minute to load here. So I'm starting to see it'll load a little bit quicker. Let's see if I load it in this. I'm sorry that this one is having so much problems. As you can see it, I hope that you see the um, benefit to it. But this one looks like it's having a few problems coming together. Okay. Is it okay if I move ahead and maybe we come back at the end? Is everyone fine with that? Okay, I'll go ahead. As I said, I was on Teachers Domain Science. That's again, that's a great resource. Uh, 
Um, you will need a username and password to register, and again, that is free. And of course, they also have tons of other resources that you can use besides just the engineering. There's social. There's all subject areas here, and that's teachers' domain science. The next one I want to show you all is going to be csitheexperience.org, and that's this tab right here. Okay, it's on the second row, and it's called CSI the Experience. And the great thing about live binders, it gives you a presentation mode down here that you present in, but you can also just click Go to Site, and that will make it pop out into a new window, and you can see it better. So if you need to do that, please do so. CSI the Experience. Is one of those sites where it takes uh, the things that you see on television, the CSI show, and it makes it relevant for students. So they're actually able to experience this show through simulations. And if you scroll down, on the bottom left, it says Educational Web Adventure. So you'll just need to click there, and this is where your students will go. And it gives, it's going to give them different web adventures, and there's different cases that they will. Um, go on. So then they have to just test their skills. Let me click on one. All right, and we're going to let the window load so that you can see it. And I really like this because a lot of us who watch, I'm into Criminal Minds and CSI. I like all of those shows. So it kind of gives you that um, a little taste of that lifestyle. I know a lot of students are interested in becoming forensic scientists. Um, it takes you through different cases, and they've just added two cases. There were only three cases before, so I'm very glad to see that. There's the beginner case, which every student should go through. It gives them the rookie training. And then there's two other cases. Uh, the canine caper and burning star, then they're getting to the advanced mode here. And so if they click on beginner, let it load. You do have to register or log in, or you can play as guest. And there may be sound to this. As they say, it's not automatically saved, but just for you to see what it's like. Let that load. And it basically welcomes them to the rookie training, and then it's going to take them through what they would do in a lab. And in every lab, how they have different tools. And here are those tools um, that they can use in, as they're trying to solve this case as a beginner student. And I think this is really good. It leads them into a critical thinking, problem solving that we want all of our students to have. So I think this is a great website for that, and I think it's exciting because it's something that they're familiar with, and um, it just gives them a different view and if they're interested in, it, um, in something like forensic science. Okay, this is really a great one. So I'm going to move on to the next one, which is Interact, which is going to be Chem LD for all of those of you all involved in chemistry. I'll let that site load. It's called Chem Ed DL, and you can basically explore chemistry with this. There's a periodic table here. There's models on this website, all different types of experiments. There's things for the chemistry teacher. There's also Moodle courses that you can enroll in, and you can take or develop courses through here yourself. Um, there's a virtual laboratory. Um, students can design and explore the digital resources here. And it's just a great thing for you to use in your classroom. So if you're lacking certain materials in your classroom, why not take them online to a virtual laboratory where they can see all of those things? Okay. And there's just tons of things to explore here. Um, there's different channels, different partners who have like the American Chemical Society, which has activities for kids to do. So you can click any of these activities that you might want to use in your room, in your science classroom. And then it starts back over. I think this is a great resource. And that in your spare time, um, this would be great to explore. 
and look at. Okay, I'm going to go on to Set Interactive. Okay. And this is a resource that has been around a very long time, but I think sometimes we forget about this resource. This has interactive simulations, and it's from the University of Colorado, Colorado at Boulder. I just think it's a great resource. You can sign in. Um, it's free to register for it, but you can browse for different simulations. Here's a salt and salts and solubility um simulation that you can do. You can also download these simulations, which I think is great. So you can make your own archive of them, or you can just copy and paste the URL into your live binder and have it ready to go when you teach that um, that subject area. So here's rate Wave on a Stream. That came up. And if you click Download, you can download it and I guess it's save it to your computer, or you can embed it into your school website or web page for your students to look at when they're at home or embed it, um, use it in Edmodo, um, or you can just click Run Now, and it will run the simulation for you. But as you can see, there's all types of simulations. They even have a new sim simulations. Um, there's physics in here. There's chemistry. There's math tools. Um, there's by grade level, um, K, through, K through 12, and higher education simulations. So all of these are great. Um, it just takes some time to explore them. It's the biggest thing um, that you have to worry about doing. So I hope that you'll remember this resource. Um, all right, now the next resource I want to show you is going to be Solar System Scope. And I really like this resource. Um, it, show, it does have some ads on the side of it, but it's one of those resources that um, it gives you a perspective of where you're standing on, um, on Earth. And as you can see, the solar system is moving around. Um, and you can see all the constellations, and it gives you different views, okay? And I'm just going to click on the Earth, and I'm going to visit the planet Earth, and there we go, and it gives you a close shot of it. And I can look at different views of it and change it. And right here there's an Earth Observatory and I can change that. Go in here and change that. And I can set it to any city that I want. And we could go to Los Angeles. Okay. I can change the time zone. And I can change the view. I can go back out. And change that. Oh, one second. Visit planet. You can do different views. And you can also do a panoramic view. And this panoramic view is very nice because you can look at your actual place on Earth and you can move it around and see where you're standing. We're in Los Angeles now. So this is what the sky would look like where the stars are. And then you can go from north, east, south, or west. But this is just uh, one of the many science um, solar system simulations out there that you can look at. Okay. I'm going to click off of that one now and go to Science Net Link. Okay, Science Net Links is a really good resource. Um, it has links to dozens of lesson plans and tools for K through 12 teachers. Okay, and so with Science Net Links, you'll just type in your term um, that you're looking for, and it will pop up that lesson for you. I'm just going to click on parts of a plant here because a lot of teachers do teach that. And basically, it's going to give you um, an e-sheet with plant parts, and there's even an interactive here on plant parts. 
Um, there's a student activity sheet that goes with it. It tells you the materials that you need. Um, there's some lesson details. It tells you what grade it is. It's for the younger students, early learning. And so you can search with science net links, just all different types of lessons. You can also find tools that you'll need. So let's look at grade seven. And let's look at tools. Um, let's look at a first science tool. Okay, there's a tsunami tool. <laughs> there's a shape it up tool from Kinetic City, biomes of the world, the water cycle at work, which I know a lot of teachers teach that, and so it gives you a tool that you can look at there. All right, and that's a great way. And then it goes to launch tool, and it gives you an animated illustration of the water cycle. So the great thing about Science Net Links is why look so many other places when it's all right here? It's going to give you the interactives, the lesson plans, and all those things that you need. It also has a um, collections tab. All right, under collections, you're going to see the science of weather. So this is a whole collection about weather, and that's something that almost all teachers teach. So um, that's a great unit there, the atom and nuclear science, staff picks for grades 9 through 12. I'm going to have to share this with my teachers <laughs> on Monday. Well, we're on spring break, but after Monday, I'll share this with them. And they just have all different types of science resources. So hopefully there's Earth Day resources and there's National Engineers Week, just tons of things that you use in your classroom. Okay. All right. The next one is going. I'm going to show you it's Edheads. Edheads. It's a great resource. I absolutely love this one. I love the simulations, and it's a very um, interactive website. I can't say how great it is. And once your screen loads, I hope you can see, have you tried virtual deep brain simula simulation? You know, this is something that kids would be so into. So I'm going to click on that. Let's click on choose an activity. As you can see, they can actually go in and do a surgery. They can choose a prosthetic limb for someone. They can actually do a crash scene investigation. Um, they can design the cell phone. This is the type of things that we're talking about when you look at STEM education, them solving a problem, putting them, immersing them in an activity um, that causes them to think about their choices and their decisions. Um, so design a cell phone would probably be real popular and a great one to start with. There's even stem cell heart repair and creating a stem cell line. Okay, so I want to try virtual deep stem cell, let's see, the deep brain stimulation surgery. All right, and here's your doctor, Ms. Vanessa, to help you cut, probe, and drill. And it does open in another window. I'm not sure if you all can see it. You may have to press start in order to see that. Okay, I'm glad, glad that you all see it. All right. And here's the simulation. It does have sound with it. Um, you may not be able to hear it right now. But it says drum up a drill and douse it. Click here to begin. And so it loads. And, I mean, how wonderful is that that they get to see something um, like a surgery for those students who want to become doctors or nurses and in the medical field. Okay. Welcome to EdHeads Virtual Deep Brain Stimulation Surgery. My name is Dr. Vanessa Mai, and today I will be showing you the five-step process of helping a patient. And there's a surgery menu at the bottom. And they're going through the process here. I'm going to go to Surgery Begins just to show you how cool this is. 
uh, and then we'll move on from there. Please explore this in your own time. I think it's great and it's lots of fun. And I think your students would get a kick out of it. Now we are ready to begin the surgery. Okay, and there's the brain. <laughs> And I know this might be gross for some people, <laughs> but it just says I'm not going to go any further than that, but that's there. <laughs> I hope you all like that simulation. <laughs> okay. All right. So I hope, I'm hope i sorry about you eating lunch right now. <laughs> um, okay. The next one I want you to take a look at is going to be 60 symbols. Dot com. It's up here at the top tab, and I want to click there. Um, for all of you in chemistry and physics and uh, math, this is a great site. It has 60 symbols dealing with the science um, sciences, and here is E equals M uh, MC squared. So what happens is if your students are confronted with a symbol that they don't know what it means, they can click that simple symbol and it will to actually take them to a video. Now, in your case, this is a YouTube video, so it may be a resource that they use at home um, if your school doesn't allow access to YouTube. But, of course, there's now YouTube for education. So if you can get that unblocked in your district, this would be great to use um, for your students to use when they have questions. And you just play the video, and it's going to talk to them about E equals MC squared. How great is that? That's 60 symbols, and again, there are many symbols on here that I have not used in a very long time <laughs> because, of course, I don't teach these courses. But I think it's just great that you'll have access to things. What is pi? What does this mean? Um, all of those things. Um, there's also different other things here. There's 60 symbols. There's the solar system, and then the symbols, and then we'll launch a video there for the planets. Um, there's also a sciences tab, and it will talk about different sciences, um, talk to different sciences. So this is also a great resource for students. Um, and then the last one in science is going to be ology. And let's see if I can find it. There's ology. I absolutely love ology, too. It's one of those sites, I think, for more um, primary and middle school. But I sh I'm sure high school would love it too. But ology is everything. Ology, from anthropology to archaeology, astronomy, biodiversity, the brain, all of these different um, ones. So anything any ology is going to be right here. And the great thing about it, and there's biodiversity, which is the new one. Um, it gives you highlights. Um, videos, but the great thing about this website is that all of the critical thinking activities, something where they can make something that deals with biodiversity. Um, what's, what is biodiversity? Exploring it, going to the global grocery, um, scientists out at work, how to draw a butterfly. So it's incorporating that arts that um, um, in if you want to add arts into STEM with STEAM, then this is something that, this is a website that does that for you. There's even a poll here. There's books on biodiversity. There's the benefits. You can even talk to the biologist, which is Felicity Arengo. She's a conservation biologist. Um, there's all types of activities, and they're all in one place, and they make it, the kids look at it, and they're like, oh, that's cool. And you can have all your students just, um, they could just explore this page and maybe do what they want to do, and this way they could reach all of the modalities. Um, all your, they, they choose one of these to do and then report back about it and how did you do it, and I think this is just a great website for that. Um, and they can go into astronomy and all different types of other ologies from here. This is great. There's even Einstein on here, expeditions, genetics, marine biology, paleontology, zoology. So just take a look at that when you get the chance. I think this is a great site. All right. Uh, now I'm going to go to the technology tab. All right. And, of course, there are um, there's so much technology out there today, and I'll let that load. What's loading now is called quickie.com. Um, and with Quickie.com, this is so great because Quickie allows you to type in any topic 
and it gives you a audio, video, um, image montage on that topic. So if I typed in the word milk, it would find the word milk, and it would load pictures on milk, and then it would describe what milk is. I'm not sure if you all can hear this. I hope you can. This is a great website. It's the videos are about two minutes long at the most. You can click on the images to get a greater view of them. But just a great website for um, just a great website. And I'm going to go back to the technology tab for um, students just to type in any topic that they want, and it's going to pop up for them. But Quickie is something that you definitely want to check out later on. And it can also give you related topics on, if I click technology, here's something about the Internet. And you can pause the video. Um, you can pop it out and make it a bigger window. Um, and that's quickie.com. My teachers use it all the time in their classrooms. The next tab I'm going to click on is CK12. It's the first tab under technology. And if you haven't heard of CK12.org, um, you may want to start looking at this page. This is where we're moving to creating our own textbooks, um, to putting them on our iPads and on our smartphones. Um, and it's a great website that does that for you. Um, you basically can create your own textbook for free using ck12.org. Um, you can make it download it for your iPad, Android, or Kindle Fire. <clears throat> So then your students have those devices, you can put it on there, but you can also just download it to your laptop. Um, the great thing about it is it already has um, textbooks already made for you. So if I was to click on a geometry textbook, they're going to give me SE stands for student edition, TE stands for teacher edition, okay? And I can download it as a PDF. I can make it a flex book, and what it does is a flex book. If you have an interactive whiteboard in your classroom, it will basically show up like a flip book in your classroom. If you do the HTML version of it too, this will allow you to actually see uh, YouTube videos that are already embedded in these. Um, if you do the PDF, you can click on the YouTube video, and that will pop up for you. So here's a flex book, and here's the table of contents on geometry. And if I wanted to actually make a flex book, I would just drag out the different chapters that I want. I don't have to do triangles and congruence if I don't want to, but if I did want this as a part of my book, I just drag it and drop it, and it becomes a part of my book. How cool is that? And so I can create my own workbook for students, and the great thing as a teacher, you can use this binder, or you can use the ck12.org to for new questions for your classroom. I'm sorry, my Firefox just crashed. <laughs> I apologize. One second. Okay, let me go to the slides. That might be better and faster. Too fast. Okay. Let's see. Okay. There's CK12. Again, a great, a great, great resource. Um, I can't say enough about it. And so, create your own textbook. Put the things in it that you want. Um, make learning more relevant for your students and what you think that they need. Um, and even create your own district textbook. What about that? Get your committee together and have them create a textbook to match the standards, okay? Um, the next one is going to be Screener. Um, it has the reason I like Screener is that if you want students to create screencast, um, maybe they're doing um, an application on the board or they're um, 
there's something that they find on the Internet and you want them to share it, but you want them to tell the students about it and you want them to be able to save it later, Screener is great for that. It creates screencasts instantly by just clicking the record button. You don't have to download anything to the computers. So um, there's nothing to worry about there, and you can embed it anywhere. You can even, um, it's available for Mac and PC, um, and it plays on an iPhone. And it's free. And all you have to do is click the red button to launch it and just um, size your window, and there you go. I think students um, would find this so easy to use. Okay, so it's a great one. Uh, the next one is gcflearnfree.org. Now, you will like this. Um, oh, the URL for screener is screener.com. That should be it. Um, GCF. LearnFree.org um, has great resources, and this is one that um, if you click on it, you will love it. Um, under computers, they have how to use your iPad too, how to do Microsoft Act, um, Excel, Access, PowerPoint, Word. So if your students are trying to create something or you're, you're trying to teach them how to do something, you can send them to this website. It has interactive tutorials, and this is um, it's just really great. And if you have students who are tr you're trying to teach them about life, it even has an interactive job application on here. Um, it's just a really great site. And I want to show it to you. I hope I can bring my um, my um, binder back up to show you how that goes. Um, it is really a great resource. If you click on all topics, you're going to get a list of all. And all this is free, of course. Um, if it's not free, it's not for me is my motto. And um, so let's try it under app sharing again. Uh, I hope I can get to it. Let's see. Oh, okay. So I'm bringing the binder back up. Okay, and again, we're in a check tab, and I'm going to move a little bit quicker because our time is getting really short. So I think I spent a lot of time under science, but I want to show you a couple of things. Um, under GCFLearnFree.org. Let's see. Again, if you click on all topics, you're going to see all the topics there. Oh, my goodness, they just have so many things. But great applications, um, like I said, and these are all interactive. If you take the answer, it's going to tell students just how to use everyday things. Um, even an ATM machine, it will take them through that. Um, and I've encouraged teachers to learn how to use um, Office and those different products by going to this website. Let's see if it will load quickly. Okay. It's taking a little bit of time to load, but here's a job application. It will take you through the, um, you can actually print it off to, but you want to start the activity in this way. And this lesson does come with sound. But it's so cool. It's just one of those things that, and all of the activities are like this. Um, very interactive for your students, and they all have to play. And you just drag things over, and they have to figure out where these things go, which is real nice. And it's just teaching them how to um, fill out a job application. It'll tell them that you know this is wrong. This is not where that goes. <laughs> so just really a really nice interactive job application, and teaching them about that about their app. Information. Um, and I want to switch over because I want to do. I want to speed up a little bit. Um, if you haven't seen Cool Tools for Schools. Wikispaces. Com, this is another great site. And the reason I put this one in here is because there's so many Web 2.0 tools. I can't list them all under technology, but this site has them all listed. And if you scroll down. You can look at presentation tools, collaborative tools, research tools, video tools. I'm going to click video tools, and you're going to see all the video tools, and it comes with all the different 
um, demos of them, so you don't have to download anything to see what it's like or go to that website, but it's going to describe them all. I mean, this is a great resource. So if you haven't seen this, encourage your fellow teachers to look at this if they're trying to find something that, you know, that fits for them. And take a look at, again, quiz tools, organizing tools, music tools. Your, send your students here. They could use this. Graphing tools, slideshow tools, just a really good resource for everything. So this is a great, great site. Um, I want to go ahead and switch to the engineering tab, which is the one that we um, said that most of us don't um, really delve into with STEM. And the first one I'm going to talk about is going to be 100 Awesome Engineering Projects. So if you're trying to figure out how to get engineering into your classroom, here's the way to do that. With 100 uh, Awesome Engineering Projects, Projects. It does. It's for a construction management degree program, but I don't care about that. I don't think it's important. If you scroll down, here's a hundred projects for kids, and they go by um, the basics. Then you're going to light and electricity, structures. So all of these are activities that you can click on, print, and use in your classroom. Travel and movement, and all of these have to do with engineering. So really, and not only engineering, they're a part of science, they're a part of social studies, they're a part of math. So now you can really integrate engineering into your classroom in this way. Great, great site. Um, I have to show you EGFI Dream Up the Future. Um, if you want to be an engineer, sometimes we don't know what kind of engineer we want to be. This site will show students the type of engineer that they want to become from chemical, mechanical, architectural, civil engineering. So let's look at um, I'm just, let's go to electrical engineering or oh, there's agricultural engineering. And it's going to take them to what agricultural engineering is all about. It basically shows them um, what they would do in this situation. You just click on the little plus signs. And it's going to tell you, you know, make a difference. Where do they work? And if you click there, it's going to take you to and give you information about what an agric agricultural engineer does. Okay. I only have a few minutes left. I'm going to go to um, Stop Disasters. This is great um, because all of us live in parts of the country that have different types of um, natural disasters. This website is great for any of your students. It will take them through a tsunami, a flood, a hurricane, a fire, um, an earthquake. So and it was going to show them how to react in it, but also how to plan for it. And I think because we're trying to plan for the future and make, and make them good decision makers, Stop Disasters is the game that you want to use for that because it's going to make sure that your students know how to budget. It uses money, but they have to spend $50,000 to stop that disaster. And once that disaster is stopped, they can, but it will also take them through it where if they're doing the wrong thing, the disaster happens. If they do the right thing, it avoids the disaster. Um, your students will absolutely love this. Um, this so I'm going to click Launch Game. Again, you can choose which one you want to do. Um, here's a wildfire. Um, there's the hurricane. And you can select the different scenarios. So. I'm just going to click let's click wildfire. I can choose an easy map or a small map to do that. And this is something that it's going to take a little bit of time, but please look at it. It's a great, great activity to use with your students because they have to make decisions and they have to protect people. Um, there's just so much that they have to do. Um, and this is a great activity. Um, before I leave, I'm just going to go ahead and click I didn't get to the math, but there's a lot of math resources in here that you can look at um, anytime that you want. Um, there's some new ones called Algebra in the Real World Movies. That is a great website for you to look at. But there's tons of math um, interactives on here. I also have a tab for Android apps that you can click on if you have an Android pad for science, um, for STEM resources. In your classroom, there's also iPad and iPod apps that you can click on 
and it will take you to different ones that you can use in your class if you have an iPad or a, um, iPods for your students. Um, Xperica HD is really great because it's experiments and they're free experiments that the students can use on their um, iPad. Or if they have smartphones, an iPhone, or Android phone, it will work on there too. Also, there's Socrative Student Clicker, and that's really great. Um, and it's one of those that it's a free student response system for iPads, laptops, anything. This is great. You don't need um, the clickers anymore. I mean, if you have access to laptop cards, you can just put Socrative on it, and it's free, and it will you can use uh, questions, create questions that way for your students. Um, so these are all great um, apps that you can look at in your free time. Also, um, just to let you know, um, on the Tech with Tia app um, tab, if you're not a STEM teacher but you're looking for other free resources, if you click on if it's not free, it's not for me, we'll also give you science resources and math resources, but you're also going to get language arts resources. And I may be going a little fast. Um, Web 2.0 tools, teacher resources, all of those things. So um, just um, feel free to look at these in your free time. Um, also take a look at EdTech Toolbox. It has a great um, a teacher in upstate South Carolina created this, but she has some great projects on here for students, for teachers also. Um, that you might want to take a look at. She has a great iPad project which creates a bookshelf for um, iPads. Um, and the kids love it because it looks just like an iPad um, project when you're done with it. Um, and then there's a STEM videos tab. If, you wanna, if you're looking for how to explain STEM, there's some great videos here that you could take a look at and use um, with anyone. And I don't want to take up all the time, so. I think, Tia, you're right on the, on the mark here because I, we're running out of time. But you know what? We can't run out of your ideas. People are just so excited about what they're seeing today. But um, if if you're available to stay on and uh, after we close out the session, I think that we need Bob Barbara to take over for a few minutes and tell us about the updates and mm -hmm. new features with Live Binders. And uh, we can come back to you after this uh, close out. Are you going to be available for us? Yes, yes, yes. I'll be happy okay. to stay around. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Barbara, <laughs> if you can take the mic now and uh, give us some updates on Live Binders. I just need to ask Leticia to stop sharing her desktop. Great. Thank you very much. Great. I won't take that long. Um, should I use application sharing or web tour? That's a good question. Try app sharing. We know for sure we're going to see it then. Okay. Basically, what I'm going to cover is just uh, real quickly how you can find some of these great resources, um, like Latia has been showing, on the Live Binder site. Barbara, um, I'm still seeing Latia's sharing. I don't know if I'm the only one. Yeah, I, I'm not able to. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, Took okay. you a little time. That's all. I'm clicking on the button, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Ah, here we go. Okay. Okay. That should be coming up, I hope. Are you seeing it? Great. Okay. So I just want to quickly go through um, some changes to Live Binder site and some easy way to find some of these great resources. So here we are on the Live Binder shelf, and you can see Tia's binder that she just presented right here. If we click on her name, uh, we'll see more of her binders. This is the other one she was talking about. If it's not free, it's not for me. And then we can also search educational categories over here on the left. So these are some standard educational categories. If you don't see what you want to search here, you can just type in something into the search term box like chemistry. 
and you'll see all these binders that people put together on chemistry. Just some really amazing resources. And the search results are sorted by the most popular. So you'll see the ones that, that people have viewed the most at the very top. We also have, in addition to searching binders themselves, you can search shelves as well. So if we look for, let's say, Common Core on the shelves, you'll see where people have actually already collected binders together for you on different subjects. So you'll see, I saw Carolyn here is here. Here's her great collection on um, school, trends in school librarianship and all sorts of common core binders on that shelf. So that is some great way to search, um, search for binders. And you can even, if you wanted to, just drop into Google and search the Live Binder site. And that will give you uh, additional things. And the way you do that, is just say site colon lifebinders.com and then search for whatever you want to search for, common core. And that's another way to search through all the binders. So if you have great binders out there, like Carolyn does and Tia does, uh, there's some things that you want to know so that your binders show up high in the search results. And that is you want to use tags and you want to have nice long descriptions. I know Carolyn puts nice long descriptions on her binders. And you want to tweet about your binder because that will put backlinks to your binders. And if you want to find out who's tweeting about your binders, you can do that uh, using backtweet. And that will, you just type in your um, URL and you can track who's tweeting about your binders. So that's always fun too. Um, so I'm just going to quickly show you the tips and tricks binder that has some of these helpful hints in it for you. So I'm searching on shelves. Oh, and I also wanted to tell you the, another thing that we just added to the binder is if you want to email a certain page that's in your binder to somebody, you can now do that by clicking on the E for embed and copy and paste this URL. So that's an easy way to send somebody right to a specific spot in the binder. And I find that really useful, especially for this binder because I'm sending it out to people all the time. So I see Paul asking if live binders can be private or public, and yes, they can be private and shared with just with certain people. So I think that's all I wanted to cover. Oh, and we can switch back to Tia. Let me close out application sharing unless there were other questions for me. I think, Barbara, at this time I'm going to turn it over to Kim to close out the session and then okay. we'll bring Tia, Tia back to us. Okay. Great. Thank you both. I'm going to go ahead and close out this session. Uh, let me find the slides. And we want to let you know that Steve Harganon is going to be interviewing Howard Rheingold on uh, April the 4th at 5 p.m. Pacific. And if you haven't been in one of his sessions, they're very interesting. And on April the 5th, he'll be talking with Joseph Grinney, April the 10th, Jennifer Fox, and April the 12th, Mark Tucker. So we hope you'll join Steve Hargadon for those interviews. We want to let you know April the 7th will be Easter weekend, so we will not have a show. On April the 14th, we will have a session with Elaine Cleavon. She will be our featured teacher session. She was nominated, and I'll be talking about the forum in just a bit, where you can nominate our next featured teacher. The 21st, we will not have a show where Classroom 2.0 will be celebrating five years. 
and we'll be working in connection with the DEN, the Discovery Education Network, and they will be having a virtual conference and in conjunction, it's going to be called the Social Learning Summit. And you can find out more information. You can also submit for a to present a 30-minute session until April 7th at sociallearningsummit.com and find out all the information you need about that session. And on the 28th, we're going to have Leanne Dougherty um, talking about iPads. So uh, please join us for those sessions. If you'd like to nominate a featured teacher or educator that works with students or colleagues and professional development, then we'd like you to fill out the form at tinyurl.com slash cr 20 live featured teacher N O M I N A T. Again, CR20 live featured teacher N O M I N A T. Any educator that works with students or colleagues, we would love for you to nominate and share that information. And you can also put it on the survey that will open automatically in your browser for you once you exit today's session. And you can also request a professional development certificate in that survey. Just list your name and your email address, and we will get that out to you. Peggy takes care of that for us. So give us a bit of time, and any time that you watch a video, one of our archived sessions, you can also request a professional development certificate to submit to your campus or district for hours. If for some reason the survey does not open, you can always email us at live at classroom20.com and request that professional development certificate as well. You can also subscribe to our iTunes U channel by going to tinyurl.com slash cr20live iTunes U and subscribe to the video or audio collection, the MP4 and the MP3 or both. All are free. It costs, doesn't cost anything. Um, when you subscribe to the channel, you get all of the MP3s and MP4s or you can subscribe. Um, just click and download each, each one individually. We also create a blog post on our website at live.classroom20.com and you can subscribe to the blog post if you don't want to go through iTunes U and get the same resources with the live binder resources and the information that way using an RSS feed aggregator as well. We want to give a very special thank you to Latina and Barbara for joining us today, as well as to Steve Hargadon, who's the founder of our organization, and to Weebly for providing our website, as well as to each of you for sharing in today's session and asking questions, and each of you. Uh, Blackboard for providing this forum for us to meet each week, as well as Weebly and to uh, one of Steve's other projects called the Web Tool Labs Project. I did copy down one question from Paula Latia. I'm going to pass it back to you for questions. Um, and Paula asked Latia. How do people handle sites where students must register? Are there any problems with your school's AUP? And do you also discuss cyber safety issues? Um, yes. Um, as I'm actually teaching cyber safety to all of the students now. I take responsibility for teaching it for all the teachers. <laughs> um, it actually gives them a free planning time. So. Um, I've done that um, with the students as far as cyber safety to make sure that I'm hitting all the points um, and all the grade levels. As far as uh, logging into websites, most of the time the teachers make up a so-called teacher-student username and email um, that allow that if that site can handle more than one login, they could all use that same login in some cases to access that site. 
Um, some students, teachers actually create Gmail accounts. There's a way for creating Gmail accounts for your students that you have control over. Um, and there's great information out there on the web for that. Um, uh, that's basically how we do it. Usually we have a generic login that teachers create for the students to access or it's under their login um, for so that, that website. So that doesn't violate your AUP? No, not the way we have it written. Okay, and so you leave it up to the teacher to take care of those situations? Yes, yes. Um, do we get parent permission? Um, most of the time not, just because of the type of website it is. It depends on, you know, if it's something like in Moto, they would send out, you know, parent permission just to make sure they're letting them know that this is the type of um, what we're doing in our schools. But generally, if it's a website like, um, I'm trying to think of one, because most of the websites are blocked in our school that aren't kid appropriate. So generally, we don't have that problem. So I would say we don't send out information to parents. Thank you. And if anyone right. would like to take the microphone to ask a question, um, just click on the hand and we'll give you the mic. Or you can continue to uh, ask questions. Once you exit the mm -hmm. session, uh, there is a survey that will open in your browser and you have to put in your name and uh, your email address in order to request the survey. I'm sorry, request the certificate. It doesn't mm -hmm. automatically pop up. You have to request it. So if you're not getting the certificate, then you it doesn't automatically happen. You have to request it. So um, Aiden, I hope that answers your question. Okay. Is there some, and Darla asks, is, is there some sort of collaborative feature with some of these websites um, that like between students or schools? Mm. Uh, I'm not sure that there is. I, in, our, in our schools, we use Skype um, for sharing. And with Skype, you could basically bring up a website and then share your screen um, between classrooms that way. I guess that's the way you could do a website sharing. Um, be amongst one or more classes per se, but I don't know if any of these websites themselves um, actually allow that as far as collaboration. But I would use Skype to do that. You could also, if you're doing your experiments, you could do some of the web conferencing uh, using mm -hmm. web conferencing uh, sites and get together that way in addition to Skype. Um, and talk about the results that you found um, and why the certain things happened and your control and, and those kinds of things as well. Is, it, is there a recommended way to search for sites like the ones that you shared today, Lutia? You know what, live binders. I tell all my teachers, go to LiveBinders.com, type in a topic. You're going to get resources that other teachers have found that are great. Um, for Read Across America Day or Dr. Seuss, I just told them, just go in and type in Dr. Seuss, and they're going to get all the resources that you need from LiveBinders because it's, teachers are creating these LiveBinders, so you're going to get the best of the best. Why use Google when you have live binders to do it for you? So that's why I use live binders. Most of the things I've found are from looking on live binders. I also go to freetechforteachers.com, um, which is a website um, from Richard Byrne. I use ilearntechnology.com. Um, uh, yeah, there's just so many blogs binders. out here. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. On live binders. Okay. The sites are vetted. You know that they're good sites and they're quality mm -hmm. sites, and that that you can use those sites, and that they're going to be reliable content, safe sites. They're not going to be anything um, inappropriate. 
mm-hmm. and they're going to be, you know, content age appropriate. And I would, somebody asked about um, cyber safety sites, and I would recommend that as well uh, to do mm-hmm. for live binders, because I know there's some great ones out there. Dean Mance is a great resource to do for cyber safety. He mm-hmm. has some, I know he has some for sure, uh, some resources on cyber safety. So um, I would suggest that you look for some of his uh, live binders on, yes, Dean Mance. Mm-hmm. On my binders. At livebinders.com. Yes, Steve Anderson has some too. On uh, cyber safety and cyber bullying. Mm-hmm. Yes, live binders is the way to go when it comes to searching for things. I mean, I've got my teachers to the point where they're like, did you look in a live binder for it? <laughs> Because it will be there for you, you know. And it takes less time out of your day if you're a teacher planning for your lessons. If you just can go to a live binder and look at the resources for your topic. And um, so many teachers use live binders just to set up their classes. I have teachers who set up their whole year now by using a live binder, and so they'll and they um, embed the live binder on their class web page, so the students have access to their powerpoints, to their videos. Um, it's so easy to put a video in from YouTube with live binders. It's just one of those things that um, you can't live without once you start using it. And Speaking of flipped classes, um, we've done sessions on flipped classes, two um, sessions on flipped classes, and all of our resources from the session are in Live Binders. So if you search Live Binders, you would find our resources that we share during the show on Live Binders. And we have, you know, many, many resources that are quality resources that were shared by our guests as well as our participants in the show. So that's a great idea from Latina to search through Live Finders um, versus Google because we know that the Live Finders resources are going to be quality resources. And we put all of our resources in a Live Finder one for each week. We put them all in Live Finder, so I recommend that you look through the our sessions as well because you're going to find those resources too. Yes, you can make a Live Finder of Live Finders. Because we made a Live Finder of Latia's Live Finder today. So we recommend that um, Mm -hmm. that's a great recommendation. Are there any other questions before we let Latia and Barbara go and enjoy their weekend? Could I share some more resources with them real quick? I didn't get just a couple more that I think would be great. Um, and Go I'm right just going to do the application sharing. I want to show you all um, a couple of things. Um, there was one in here called Photo Peach. It's something that your students could possibly use at home to create a, um interactive whiteboard quiz for your classroom, or you could create it yourself. But um, I want to show you, I did this with Photo Peach, and I hope you all can see it. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, I created a water cycle quiz in August of last year um, just to show my teachers the great things they could do with this, um, the water cycle and with Photo Peach. I took three pictures of the water cycle and you can probably see it and use this with an interactive whiteboard. And the questions pop up. And it says this is an example of, and it gives you three different choices. You can do this on your whiteboard and have your students come up and click the right answer. 
of course I got it wrong. I didn't answer it enough time. <laughs> but it's just a great um, little activity that you can do with any type of picture in science, um, even math. So that's precipitation, and you would just click it to answer it. And, of course, I got it right. And I think that's just a really cute way of creating um, a quiz in your classroom or even a quiz for your um, for homework. And you can tweet it, you can Facebook it, you can email the quiz and share it with other people. So I thought that may be a website that you all would like um, to have a look at. Um, there's also one called Game Star Mechanic that I'm going to click on to. Um, it's on the Technology tab. Uh, you have to go out to the website now um, from the tab. But it allows them to make their own games. It, it basically takes that science, technology, engineering, math, and messes it into one. And the students can actually make their own games. They can publish them. Um, this is free for up to 40 students in your class. Down here, if you want to know more teachers, you just click on the Teachers tab. It gives you instructions for setting up your classes. It gives you resources. There's even a community. Um, but this is a great way to really get them problem solving and actually creating their own games. And these are actually games created by students here. And it tells you what it is in two pages. And it says, and creates a motivation for STEM learning. And that's sort of the point of today's um, show. And of course, they have different sample games, but all of these are games that um, students created. So, and I would use this with probably second grade and up. And I can see high school and middle, middle school students really loving this. So, um, I think that would be a great resource for um, your classroom. Okay. Um, a really good site. It's not popping up. I don't want to keep you all too long um, here. Extra Normal has always been a good website um, to use with your students. Um, let's see which one to look at. Today's Meet is something that you could use in your classroom because sometimes a lot of kids don't get to answer their questions, ask questions that they need to ask. So it would be great. And if you all use something like Today's Meet, which is a back channel, and you could join, um, they just type in their name, and they get to join the Today's Meet. And once they join it, um, they can ask questions, they can make comments. Just a great idea. And I think it's great when a teacher is, if you are going to lecture, why not do your lecture or if they're watching a video and have the Today's Meet, have them on the Today's Meet asking questions. And then that way you can go back and look at it. You can also print a transcript and you can keep um, Today's Meet for up to a year. I think it's a year that you can keep the website. So it's just a great um, tool and back channel that's real easy to set up um, in just a few seconds. And I'm just going to go out to this one and just go to the regular Today's Meet. You just name your room, and you can delete the room. Like they say, it can go away in two hours, eight hours, one day, one week, one month, or one year. Um, just a great site for student feedback. Okay. And let's see. On the math site, the Interactive Mathematics Project was a site I found that has really good items on it. Um, it has some sim simulations, but they even have um, machines and visualizing uh, mathematics problems. And I think this would be great for math teachers, something that they could use um, in their classrooms. And this is the interactive, interactive mathematics projects. Also, for students of math, there's Manga High. Um, our district actually um, set this up for all teachers, and it's free. Okay, um, if your district doesn't do it, you can set it up here. Like I said, it takes two minutes. You just need to view the video, and it's free games-based K through 12 math teaching resources. Um, really good. Um, math games for your students, because um, some of them are probably tired of going on Cool Math and other websites that they love so much, but this is a new one that they can go on 
Okay, and it's got that manga manga feeling to it. There's even algebra meltdown. <laughs> um, so these are great games, and they're all free. So I think for a teacher, this would be worth you signing your students up to for, and then you can view their scores with that. It's a great website. Okay, yes, challenge other schools. Um, also, there's stemcollaborative.org. Um, I also put this is on the home page, but I'm gonna. Uh, I also put this on the STEM page, but I also put it here because this is real life math, and I really like this site. It has some great interactives. There's a road trip. There's a rock and roll, uh, rock and roll road trip for students to go on. There's math by design where they actually have to design a playground. I mean, how awesome would that be to design your own school playground? Um, there's Scale City. Okay, and um, it talks about building cities there to scale. And then there's proportion land where they learn about proportions. And, you know, as teachers, sometimes we don't know everything, and sometimes we need these interactives to help us teach our students. But this is a great, great interactive website. And the more real and lifelike it is for the students, the more they will enjoy it. Um, it takes a minute to pop on, but hopefully it will come in. But definitely, if you have time, this is something that you might want to take your students, um, have your students do in your classroom, or have them do for extra credit even if you're looking um, for a way to entertain them academically. Let's see. Looks like it's not coming up, but I guarantee you that it is worth it. So when you get the chance to look at it, please do. Um, there's a lot of math teaching videos in here. One of the ones I wanted to show you was Study Jams Math. Study Jams Math is not only just, um, they also have Study Jams Science. But I love this because um, it has so many topics, but you just click the arrows, and there's your problem solving. Um, and under problem solving, it's going to tell you how to identify missing or extra information. And then basically, it takes the kids into a video. And it tells you, it's a little loud for me, it tells you step by step. It even gives you vocabulary that's taught in this video. And then they can test themselves. But it's just great on how to solve a word problem. And so they're going to learn it step by step. And there's six steps. Well, there's six steps here and then the answer. Okay. This is something that you can use on your interactive whiteboard if you choose to. But they've got all different types of study jam activities. There's not only just problem solving. What about probability? My high school teachers actually use this to help teach probability to their students um, in high school, even though it may seem... Um, more elementary or middle, it's really great for middle and high, I think, this um, website. Again, there's measurement, geometry, algebra, and it has all the different topics below it. So if you're looking, if students are just having a hard time understanding it, try sending them to a site like this. They would really love it because, it, again, it's interactive um, all the way around for them. So that's a great site. And again, the science one. It's awesome, too. You have great things, plants, animals, scientific inquiry, just teaching them that. Um, energy, light, and sound, force and motion, so many different things that you could use in your classroom. All right. Um, Get the Math is also a nice site. Um, and there are challenges on here, okay? Um, I'm not going to go into everything with this. But it gives you different challenges, real life challenges, math and music. Take the challenge, match the electronic beat and the instrumental sample. Um, when I was teaching, all my students wanted to do was beat on the desk, and it drove me crazy. <laughs> but I would love to use this with students who love to beat on the desk. Okay, let's make music with math and how that goes. So that's one of the great things about that, um, that you could take that and transform it into something and really get those students who may be or not, you know, listening because they're so into their music, this would be a way to excite them in your classroom. 
okay? And there's math and fashion. Think about that for the young ladies who want to be fashion designers. You know, it seems that at one point everyone I knew wanted to design their own clothes, but for those students who are really um, eager at doing that, they could do that and take the challenge, um, design a, a garment for $35 or less, okay? And that sounds great to me. <laughs> so, and it's just a great thing. And there's math and video games. So it's going to show how this young woman actually creates video games. And this is great for girls because a lot of times they don't think that they are um, capable of creating, you know, they think of it as being a boy's thing, some of them video games. But, you know, here's a young woman creating a video game. So it would be great to show them something like that. Okay. So, um, it's all about touching our students to where they are now. Um, problems with the point was one thing I wanted to show you. Okay, and here's definitely middle school suggestion for teachers. But here's math problems and teacher resources that you can search and look for um, problems with the point. So it's going to give you um, that pro problem for them to look at and then go through um, and solve. So you're flipping the classroom. You're putting it on your students. Um, there's a webinar I did with Jill Brown um, and through LiveBinders.com, and she is has the best flip classroom you will ever see. And she was able to flip her classroom, um, and her students don't even sit at desk really. Um, they do their work at home, and then when they come in, then she's helping them with the things that they didn't understand, or they're moving on at their own pace. And it's just a really great thing to see. But she talks about it. If you go to livebinders.com, that's one of their webinars where she talks about how she flipped her classroom. Um, and she's a STEM teacher also, so you would enjoy looking at that. And there's lots of great things in here, again, and I just wanted to make sure I touched on the math. And just to go back to the engineering, again, there was 100 awesome engineering projects um, on here, but there's different things. I found one called How Tunes, and it tells how to do something. Now, this may be blocked in your district. Um, it wasn't in mine, but it goes through little things like um, a small step for mankind, and it takes them through in a um, cartoon type of simulation of how that works. So it's a how to. <laughs> um, I thought it was really neat. It's something fun. I would throw this up um, maybe um, as a bell ringer and have the students try and figure out what that's talking about or explain that how to um, to me. The measure of a man is another good one. And it's just a cartoon, but it goes through all these different things. And just and you can download it, PDF to print, okay? And if you make it a PDF and you have Active Inspire Promethean, you can always import it. Um, and have the students go through, and maybe they can create their own how-to. Wouldn't that be great using one of the comic um, creators um, that you could get? Um, again, the comic creators, if you go to Cool Tools for Schools, they have do dozens of comic creators there. Um, Oh, Building Big is one from, I believe, PBS that has great things in it. And you can learn how to build bridges, domes, skyscrapers, dams, and tunnels. There's interactive labs here, and there are challenges for students here. So that's another good website as far as engineering is concerned. Um, and you can use this in your classroom. I loved building a bridge when I was in seventh grade. <laughs> that was my science project, and I wish I had had this website to help me. <laughs> so um, just a great website for that. Um, Engineering Interact, if you haven't seen this website, this will be a treat for you. But Engineering Interact has dozens of games for students to play. Um, there's light. Um, sound, forces in motion, earth and beyond, electricity, um, and students will love it. It's very interactive, and I think it's something that um, they would enjoy. There's a resource bank. You can discover more um, things on light and sound. There's an area for teachers. It tells you how it fits the curriculum um, there. So just great things. Um, there's also Energyville. Love this website. Um, from Chevron. I'm going to skip the intro. 
um, and you basically give, have a city, and it's up to you to provide the power. Again, putting a problem-solving simulation for students, um, and then how much power do we need to power a city with our cars, our electricity, um, our planes, and this is very important. Um, because this is something that our nation is going through right now, and this could help students understand this. And then they have different cities, so you could have your students do their city, and then, of course, they vote and rank on the cities. And then, of course, it has guided play here, and you just name your city. And this is something that they could do in your classroom and create a challenge with just the kids in your class or in groups, and then have them build their own city out and, how, and see how much energy they can save. So this is a great website. Um, that's really uh, some of the different ones I wanted to show you that you could use. Um, and really take a look if you get a chance to look at the EdTech Toolbox. Um, you can download it here. Hello? On the EdTech Toolbox, this is a really great site for different projects, but your kids will love the, the iPad project. Um, they will absolutely love this. This downloads and it actually looks like an iPad. <laughs> so I think they'll love that. And these are some other different video, um, different projects there. Um, but that's really all I wanted to share with you all. And I thank you for listening a little bit longer. Well, thank you so, so much. Tim, I'm really done. I appreciate it. Much. And mm -hmm. we won't have a session next Saturday, the 7th. We hope everybody has a great evening. Easter weekend, Passover weekend, and we will see you on the 14th with Elaine Cleavon. That's going to be another fantastic session. She's great, great with STEM resources, and she's real big on including girls in the STEM uh, and science and math. And, and um, she's also um, a big discovery user. And their discovery has lots and lots of resources and STEM resources that are free, even if you don't have the discovery streaming resources. So I encourage you to explore their STEM resources as well. And Latia, if you could put in your contact information in the chat, that would be great. Okay. And okay. We'll, we'll post the Live Binder link again in the chat for you. And we thank you all for joining us today. And Latia, uh, people mentioned that they uh, would love for you to uh, apply to be one, one of the speakers in the uh, virtual social summit with the discovery session. So that's something you may want to consider and show some of the new resources that you have found. So that might be I would love to. to. So yes, explore that. Um, I'm pulling up the site, virtualsociallearningsummit.com. Everybody can apply okay. a 30 minute session. It's all free. Um, but remember, it's only 30 minutes. It's very limited. But you can pick out just a few things to what their appetites and they can explore it on their own. That goes for everybody. Uh, so anyway, we encourage you to explore those things. Um, and explore the resources that Discovery Education has and Classroom 2.0 has. Um, have a great weekend, everybody, this weekend. And uh, enjoy your we holiday weekend next weekend. And we will see you on the 14th with Elaine, everyone. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. And we will see you online.